Hi friends, an adjustable power source is an obligatory attribute on the table of radio amateur, but often because of their high cost many prefer to make a laboratory power supply themselves. Power supplies can be linear and pulsed. The main advantage of pulse circuits is their high efficiency of 90 and more percent, instead of linear circuits have a low efficiency, but provide a cleaner output voltage without any interference that is inherent in impulse power supplies. Any radio amateur will think. I agree that linear circuits are better, but when designing high power linear power supplies, there are problems with cooling power transistors. I strongly advise you to watch a couple of the latest videos on the topic of a linear power supply. They are explained in detail about possible problems that you can encounter when designing a linear PSU. Links to the videos can be found in the description. I will briefly explain what the main problem is. Suppose you have assembled a power supply with a voltage adjustment from 0 to 30 volts and current from 0 to 5 amperes. In the case of a linear circuit, if you set low voltages and high currents at the output, for example 3 volts and 5 amperes, the output is about 9 watts, so on the transistor there will be a voltage drop of at least 27 volts. Taking into account a current of 5 amperes, you will get 140 watts of power in the form of useless heat, which must be removed. There are two main options for solving the problem, a huge radiator with a fan for cooling the power transistor or a system for switching the transformer windings. The second option is most preferable and it will allow you to get rid of massive radiators and a noisy fan. The principle of operation is very simple. At low output voltages, a smaller voltage is applied to the input. Thus, the power dissipated on the transistor will be much less, hence the efficiency will increase. But in order to use the switch, you need to have a transformer with several secondary windings, preferably with completely identical parameters, for example, three windings of 12 volts. Here is the simplest and most reliable relay switchboard. Let's look how it works. The whole circuit is assembled on a small printed circuit board. A link to the board can be found in the description. The board isn't complicated, so it can be made at home. But if you need to make boards in large quantities, it's much cheaper to send the file of the board to a factory. The GLCPCB factory is one of the leaders in the field of production with many years of experience in the market. Download the Gerber file of your board to the website of the GLCPCB Select the options you need, pay for the order, and that's all. By the way, prices start from $2 for 10 pieces, which is very profitable. A link to GLCPCB can be found in the description. We have a pair of Zener diodes for the same voltage. A pair of relays is controlled by low-power reverse conductivity transistors. Point A is connected to the output of the laboratory power supply. The ground is general. The switch circuit is powered by a separate, low power winding. If the voltage at the output of the laboratory unit is below 12 volts, the Zener diode is closed. It's worth noting that just an insignificant currents flow through the Zener diodes and base emitter transitions. If the voltage at the output of the laboratory power unit is greater than 12 volts, the first Zener diode will instantly operate. Through an open transition, the current will flow to the relay winding. As a consequence, the relay will also work and commute the corresponding winding. Now the input of the stabilizer is 24 volts. When we increase the output voltage of the power supply unit to the threshold value, and this is the sum of the voltages of both Zener diodes, the second Zener diode works in the same way. This leads to unlocking of the second transistor and the second relay will work. 
Now the input of the stabilizer receives full voltage from all three windings connected in series. The first relay is on, power is supplied to its winding. But now this relay doesn't play any role, since the power is supplied through the second relay. Naturally, it's not scary, but adding to the circuit one more transistor and a Zener diode, you can solve this. If the voltage at the output of the power supply is greater than the sum of the stabilization voltages of the Zener diodes, the third transistor is triggered and shunting the base of the transistor which controls the first relay to the ground. Transistor will close and the relay will shut off. An additional Zener diode is needed to provide a kind of switching high stresses, but this part can be excluded from the circuit. In this circuit, use the relay with a coil voltage of 12 volts. Diodes are used to suppress the self-induction voltage from the relay windings during the shutdown. Otherwise, the breakdown of the control transistors is possible. The switching current of the relay depends on your power supply unit. If you design a unit of 5 amperes, it is advisable to take the relay with a double reserve, for example of 10 to 12 amperes. Limiting resistors at base circuit of transistors can have resistance from 6.8 to 15 kilo ohm. You can take any reverse transistors of small and medium power. Among the drawbacks of the circuit is the usage of an electromagnetic relay. The relay makes much sound during switching, and the contacts aren't eternal. But I must say that in many industrial power units, just this solution is realized. There are systems where the switch is a triac, but such switches are also not ideal. Often there are control problems and the triac itself will have losses, and therefore heating. In addition, triac circuits are rather complicated. The switching circuit can be powered by two ways, from a separate winding, which is wound on the main transformer, or from a separate low power unit. The voltage of this source should be from 18 to 12 volts at a current of 200 to 300 milliamperes. Well, like I didn't forget anything. The printed circuit board with the circuit is in the project archive. The link is in the description. There you also will find links to the purchase of all components for assembling such a system, as well as links to the finished switches. You can visit our channel's group and ask questions. Now I say goodbye until new meetings. With you was Kasyan TV.